This Use a Play is brought to you by Whoa, I'm happy Now I'm gonna take my time I'm happy Enjoying myself with lime I'm happy Escape from reality Yay And let lime take care of me Whoa, whoa, we're just happy and smiling Doing almost anything Having fun and just living Whoa, whoa, shopping, chilling, everything Get happy with Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today This is the Barbados Today Morning News Update for Wednesday, October the 8th, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. A pleasant good morning to you. Five days after his grand theft conviction in the United States was made public, Jefferson Miller has been dismissed from the position of Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Cricket Association. Informed sources have told Barbados today the decision was taken at Monday night's eight-hour meeting of the Joel Garner-led 14-member BCA board. The marathon session, which started at 5.30 p.m. and concluded at around 1 a.m., reportedly got a bit stormy at times, but was mostly marked by full and frank discussions on the matter. That was made public by Barbados Today in an expose that came less than four months after Miller assumed the island's top cricket administrative position. In that story, Miller, who is currently bonded to a Miami court and is on probation for the next 12 years, inclusive of a two-year supervised community service order, also admitted to concealing his conviction from his Barbados employers. Now, when contacted yesterday, BCA President Joel Garner said he had no comment to make to Barbados today on the issue. A Minister of Finance, Chris Sinclair, says he is not prepared to jump on the bandwagon of calls for heads to roll at the National Insurance Board over the delay in the payment of pensions and all other NIS benefits. Sinclair's cabinet colleague, Don Villainis, has suggested that top management of the NIS should be fired over what he termed the fiasco of the department. Meanwhile, Sinclair is assuring that the wait for pension checks will definitely be over by Friday. The NIS has said the delay was caused by a recent computer hardware malfunction. Sinclair has also given the assurance that government was working to settle outstanding income tax rebates. He told Barbados today the delay in the payment of income tax returns was the result of recent cash flow challenges. The opposition wants Prime Minister Frondel Stewart to fire his Minister of Education. Shadow Minister of Education Edmund Hinkson says Stewart should dismiss Ronald Jones if he does not step down. Hinkson told a press conference at the opposition leader's office in Parliament buildings yesterday that Jones was no longer capable of engendering any feelings of hope for the future of the youth, and neither could the public continue to have confidence in him as a Minister of Government. The citizens of any democratic country must be able to believe, rely and act on the words and public undertakings of a cabinet minister. They must be able to plan their everyday lives and future based on the statements and promises made by any member of the cabinet of a nation. Events over the last six months have clearly demonstrated that Barbadians, whether students, their parents or the general public, have found it next to impossible to hold sacred the public pronouncements of this minister as they relate to the funding of the University of the West Indies onerous tuition fees of financially challenged Barbarian students. Minister Jones has, in our opinion, failed to meet the expected standard of ministerial conduct such that citizens affected can reasonably plan their affairs and their future. In sports now, the first series of games in the 2014 Guardian Group Herman Griffith Primary Schools cricket competition will be held at various locations across the island this morning. However, the featured match is between defending champions Wesley Hall Jr. and St. Giles Primary at Dover Christ Church. 
Yesterday, Executive Manager of Guardian General Insurance Limited, Nigel Adams, told the media launch that the competition was a nursery for the future of cricket in Barbados and, by extension, the West Indies and the world. This competition, without a doubt, lays the foundation for the discovery and the harnessing of young talent. Boys and girls who go on to play cricket at the domestic, regional, and international levels. It teaches them discipline, confidence, teamwork, and fair play. As a sponsor, we are extremely proud to know that this competition has been the cricket nursery for many of our young, talented cricketers. And Chief Executive Officer of the National Sports Council, Jerry Blenman, he described the competition as a means of developing not only young, talented men, but a nation. It is my hope that as we over the next few months, examine, award, recognize the talents, these young brilliant men that we will hold close within our foresight. That sports is not just an activity in Barbados, but it's an opportunity for developing a significant sector where men, as sports individuals, people, as administrators can contribute not only to the development of sports but the socio-economic development of a nation. It is regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like coal. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. In regional news, suspected cases of the chikungunya virus has resulted in up to 30% absenteeism of staff and students in schools across the six regions in Jamaica as at yesterday. The Ministry of Education says a survey revealed that 3,911 students and 591 teachers were absent from schools. Education Minister Ronald Twaits has commended the management and staff of the affected schools for their efforts in keeping the institutions open, as well as for providing much health care as possible to students. And finally, on the international scene, the U.S.-led coalition has carried out its most sustained attacks so far on Islamic State fighters attacking the Turkey-Syria border town of Kobane. Syrian Kurdish fighters say the strikes were the most effective yet, but should have come much earlier. Correspondents say the surge of ISIS appear to have been halted. The BBC's Paul Adams reports. For the first time, I think we can say that airstrikes in the region of Kobane do seem to have had a tangible effect. Does that mean that Kobane is out of danger? Absolutely not. The Turkish president, President Erdogan, has said that the city could still fall unless there is some kind of ground intervention. And he is driving a hard bargain with other members of the coalition before he is willing to commit boots on the ground. He wants to see a renewed emphasis on getting rid of President Assad, the creation of some kind of no-fly zone over northern Syria, and a buffer zone where refugees could be housed. And that's how we end our Barbados Today morning news update. You can join us again for the afternoon edition. But in the meantime, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay in supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV to get the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a wonderful day. This news update is brought to you by...
You don't know how I like it. You don't know how I like it. Feeling happy. All of we as one. You don't know how I like it. You don't know how I like it. I'm feeling free. Feeling really good. You don't know how I like it. You don't know how I like it. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today. 